Let's do this. Woo! Ring the bell. This is Between the Ropes. Oh, you're going for the dirt, for the the behind-the-scenes stuff. It's time to get Between the Ropes. Between the Ropes. He is NXT superstar Tyler Breeze. NXT going on the road Thursday and Friday in Philadelphia, Saturday in Albany, then back at Full Sail University for TakeOver on the WWE Network next Wednesday. Tyler, thanks for the time. How's everything going? Really good, really good. How about you? Good, man. You've been going on the road a little bit more with WWE outside of NXT. What's that experience been like so far? Uh, it's been awesome. It's been really uh really eye opening, really cool, really fun to work with uh, you know, a lot of the, the main roster talent. Um, you know, just just in general in front of the large crowds. It's totally different from NXT. Uh, but also, you know, very similar. It's um it's very very different but very the same and it's uh it's it's cool. I'm I'm glad I get the opportunity. Do a lot of the main roster talents already know who you are? Uh, they do, actually. The, uh, the main roster is very in tune with the NXT product, and uh, they actually, you know, it's, it's, some people like to think of it's, it's like a little rivalry between the NXT and the main roster, but it really isn't. Uh, you know, everybody's real supportive of each other, and, you know, everybody's going to be watching uh, TakeOver Unstoppable, and, uh, you know, they watch NXT every Wednesday, and they just keep up with everything and keep up with all the talent down there, and it's really cool... Uh, you know, they're, they're ready for us when they see us. We've already seen what the reaction is when NXT goes on the road, especially the show uh, WrestleMania weekend or when it's at full sale. But what has the reaction been like to you in particular when you go on the road with the main roster? It's been a mix. It's, uh, it really depends kind of where you are. Uh, there's a lot of markets that um, are a little more familiar with the NXT stuff. And, you know, as soon as I walk out, they... They kind of already know, you know, who I am and NXT Chance and Breeze's Gorgeous Chance. And then, uh, you know, there's some other towns that you just kind of have to establish as soon as you come out there. You have to, you know, kind of tell them who you are, tell them who Tyler Breeze is. And, uh, you know, by the by the time you're done, they know they know who I am after that. And they, you know, they're a little more curious about the NXT product. So it's kind of cool. Every night's a little different. Do you get more cheers or booze these days? Yeah, that's a, again, that's kind of, uh, you know, depends where we are. Uh, if we're doing our TV tapings at Full Field University... It's uh, very much a mix. It's, uh, it, it varies. Sometimes, you know, they're very much behind me. Sometimes they're booing me out of the building. Do you care what kind of reaction you get? You know what? As long as people care one way or another, uh, I'm okay with that. You know, if they're, they're kind of sitting there waiting for the next thing to go on, uh, that's, that's what, what gets me. So as long as people are either chanting, Breeze is gorgeous or no, he's not, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm good either way. Let's talk a little bit about the E60 Pictures documentary, uh, Behind the Curtain, that it just aired uh, last week on ESPN, and you were a part of that. I know you weren't one of the feature guys on the main show, but um, you were taped for that, and they had a big uh, package that they released online for it. Um, what was it like for you to watch them? What were your thoughts of it? It was really cool. It was, uh, you know, I was very honored to even have the opportunity to, to work with ESPN and E60, and you know, everybody we worked with on there was awesome to work with and just great, you know, to... Uh, to film with and you know we did a lot of interviews and it was actually just the timing on it was perfect because they they happened to just start doing it right around the time i debuted the tyler breeze character and uh you know so they kind of saw the whole transformation from mike dalton into the tyler breeze stuff and the fact that they you know were able to capture it on film and get the uh interviews and the the nerves and everything as i was doing it you know i mean they were there on the day that i did it so um it was cool and you know everybody Everybody who knows the Tyler Breeze story, you know, they kind of got to see it unfold. And people who didn't know, they kind of got the, the backstory on it. And, uh, you know, my family got to watch it. Everybody got to watch it. You know, it's, I think um, everybody felt like they, they got a little more insight into everything that I bring to the character and what it's all about. Yeah, and that's the thing, too, because this character is, there's so much more to it than Mike Dalton. Do you, Looking back at it now, do you realize what was not working in particular about Mike Dalton? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a connection thing, um, and I mean, just something for the, the people to sink their teeth into. And, you know, even if, if I was, you know, stepping back and watching myself as Mike Dalton, I can see, you know, if I was a wrestling fan, I would go, you know, okay, you know, on to the next, next person, you know, that was, that was good or whatever, but uh, there really wasn't much substance to it. And, uh, you know, Tyler Breeze has a lot more a lot more substance to it, a lot more, you know, you can kind of sink your teeth into what I'm doing and you watch even, I mean, it, it really, it comes down to everything. The appearance is different. You know, the music's different. Uh, you know, even the way I'm wrestling is different. It's, um, 
it's just very much different. And I don't know if it's a maturity thing or, you know, just experience thing, but it's just, you know, I had to grow into kind of, you know, learning what worked and what doesn't. And, uh, you know, Tyler Breeze seems to be doing all right so far. Well, how long did that transformation take? Was it, was it like six months? It was, yeah. I think, uh, I think I came up with it about December. I believe it was December, maybe 2011. And, uh, or maybe, no, maybe 2012, right at the end of 2012. Yeah. And I kind of came up with it, kind of started refining it. You know, I had um, opinions from a lot of people just kind of helping me kind of which direction we wanted to go with it. And it was kind of, you know, we were testing it out on the NXT Live events, just, you know, trying some stuff out here and, you know, getting rid of some stuff and adding some stuff. And um, by the time I debuted it on NXT, I believe it was July. Um, and, yeah, it was about a, about a six-month process to kind of work out the kinks and get comfortable and, you know, figure out who exactly Tyler Breeze was. And, you know, from there, it was really kind of nonstop. Everybody just was so helpful with it and just started gaining traction, and we kind of got to where we are now. Well, how did you come up with the initial idea of Tyler Breeze? It was based on a, a lot of things. It was uh, it started out because um, I had seen uh, – I was working with Norman Smiley, and he was – we'd have people come in for tryouts uh, back when, when FCW was around. And they would come in, and they'd come in for about a week for a tryout. And we have people from all over the place, you know, all, all different backgrounds and everything, and they'd be actors or models or, you know, just even, you know, different different athletics. And it was all all, uh, all sorts of people. And I would get to work with them with Norman, and I'd teach them the basics, you know, kind of, you know, the lock-ups and headlocks and all that stuff, and just kind of enough to see if they were catching on, catching it, you know, uh, if there was anything to it. And we we would laugh to ourselves because they would say some really funny things and not even know it. You know, like they would say, like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to watch Friday Night Smashdown or, you know, I, I want to be in a friend team or, you know, I need a friend team partner and all this stuff. And, like, we would just kind of laugh our heads off about it, and the people would have no clue about it. Like, they were just, you know, innocent almost, and it was it was just kind of a funny little thing. And we kind of, you know, were thinking, I think there might be something to this. And so initially that's what Tyler Breeze was, was, uh, you know, almost like a just someone who saw the wrestling business and just kind of said, that looks easy. I think I could do that. And, you know, it's not uncommon. A lot of people have thought that. And, you know, it's just kind of grown from there with little bits and pieces from everywhere else. Yeah, and that's the interesting thing is because there are so many layers and we see the character develop all the time, you know. And so many different little tweaks still happen. Like it wasn't, you know, it was several months ago even when you changed your music even. And now you're singing on your your theme song. So what was it like being a part of that process? And did you have any experience singing before? Well, that was that's that was another really cool thing, and I mean, there's been so many opportunities with uh, this Tyler Breeze character that I've been able to do, and that was one of them. I just kind of got an email one day saying, you know, can you be there at 9 a.m. to to do a voiceover? And so I thought I would just come in and you know say a couple of lines, you know, say you know I'm gorgeous or whatever, and they would just kind of do something. And the next email I got was uh, it was an entire song like with lyrics and everything, and I just <laughs> kind of stopped for a second and emailed it back and said, am I singing? And like, am I, what am I doing here? And they said, yeah, yeah, you're uh, you're singing your whole song. And so I kind of worked with the music people, and I, uh, you know, asked them, if, I was like, hey, you know, would you mind if I add some, you know, some of my kind of catchphrase type stuff or, you know, stuff, stuff that Tyler Breeze would, would say into this song? And they said, yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, we kind of went back and forth a little bit and worked out what the lyrics were. And I came in the next day and ended up singing through. I think we did like three or four versions of it. And uh, Triple H ended up hearing it and said, you know, yeah, it's awesome. And uh, so, so we ended up, we even we even ended up doing the, the music video for it, which was really fun. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, it came out really great. The music department did an awesome job of that. I do like the music video as well. I've seen that. So hey, have you ever, had you ever sung in public prior to that? <laughs> nah, besides the, the odd karaoke night, no. Yeah. Because that can be the most frightening thing. It's one thing to go out in front of people and, and perform and everything, but then to sing, even in front of a couple of people, to me, that would be nerve-wracking. You know what? It really is. It really is. I mean, we don't really think about it as much as we do, but when I actually step back and think about it, you know, I'm in the ring uh, in front of thousands of people, and, you know, I'm at home. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> standing in front of 50 people, you know, doing karaoke or something is just terrifying, so... You know, there's not that many uh, WWE superstars that have sung their own entrance music. I, I know there's a natural comparison immediately that reminds me of you and Shawn Michaels now. Yeah, yeah and, uh, you know, even just to have that comparison is, is quite the honor. Uh, and I'm not going to argue with that, you know? Yeah, a <laughs> little bit of a similar look, a little bit of a similar hair, super kick. You're singing your, 
your entrance music. There, there's a lot of things going on there. Well, I mean, some some people like to make the comparison. I kind of don't like to compare, you know, myself to anybody else. But uh, to say that he was at least an inspiration uh, is definitely accurate. Yeah, was there anybody else that was uh, an inspiration that you can think of right off the bat that you have seen and said, let me add this little element or that element? It was really, yeah, it was uh, kind of a lot of different people because initially it wasn't really aimed at, you know, Shawn Michaels or anything at all. It was uh, a lot of, you know, I kind of wanted to, you know, almost not know anything and just kind of, you know, I'd, I'd almost go out there and just, you know, be someone on the outside looking in. Um, and then I kind of started watching. I watched a lot of uh, old Gorgeous George stuff, which was, you know, it was remarkable. It was awesome. It was really, you know, ahead of its time. And I took a lot of that and just tested it out. And I took some Buddy Rogers, uh, and then I added in some Shawn Michaels. I added in some Bret Hart. It was, it, you know, it was just kind of, little bits and pieces of a lot of different stuff that kind of uh, came into what the character is now. And we know when you come out to the entrance, you've, uh, you're always using your cell phone, you're using it for the video, and how much are you in tune with new advances when it comes to social media and technology and trying to introduce that to the character? Because I also see now, not only are you active on Twitter, but obviously you're using Periscope, and a lot of that is before shows. So how in tune are you with uh, technology and social media and, and everything as it continues to grow? Well, and that's the thing, too, is, you know, the world is so fast-paced now. It's uh, it's hard to keep up with everything. And, you know, the, the second you get comfortable with something, there's something new out there, and you've got to, you know, you've got to keep up with it because, you know, people are just, they're moving so quick. The attention spans are so quick. And, uh, you know, the fact that we have, the, you know, the WWE Network and everything now, there's so much uh, accessibility to, you know, technology, and just the possibilities are endless. And especially, you know, because if you, um, on, the, on the E60 documentary there, you saw that I initially started with uh, a mirror. It was it was going to be just a mirror, and you know Triple H was actually the one who said, you know, hey, I, I think uh, I think we're past that. I think we're moving into you know the age of technology, and you know these selfies are a big thing, and uh, you know so we started with that, and then the uh, the tech department actually came up with you know to stream it live as I'm walking down. They stream it up onto the Tron, and uh, and then I actually just found out about the Periscope stuff, and I've just been testing that out on. Uh, on the live events coming out to the Periscope stuff. And, you know, it's actually really cool because people, people can just click the link and log on live and see what's happening on my phone. So, you know, the, the stuff they're coming out with is just really cool. And the fact that I actually get to, you know, play with it and, and use it to enhance my character is really cool. How long until we see you use Periscope in the middle of a match? I, you know what? I don't know, man. I, I, I've, been, I've been playing with it and kind of trying to get the hang of it. Uh, it is a tricky one, but it's also the fact that people can, you know, make comments and do whatever they want on it is uh, a little out of my hands. So I'm not sure, not sure how far I want to go with that one yet. But we're we're testing it out right now. And the thing is, too, when it comes to the character, the thing that when it comes to using technology and advancing it and everything like that, it seems like the character is well fit for not only today's age, but something on the main roster as well, not just NXT because it is incorporating all these different things and it's hitting like a, the right demographic when it comes to doing all of that. You know, I think the thing that's going to be very curious is while you've gone on the road several times with the main roster is what it's going to be like when that day finally comes, when you get called up and what that transition is going to be like. Do you think that's going to be a difficult one considering that it's a larger audience and it's part of that audience you know, is not even going to know who you are. Yeah, and you know what, that's, I mean, that's, uh, you know, a fair assumption. Um, but I'm, I'm not trying to assume anything right now just because, you know, we have the WWE Network and everything is just, you know, at our fingertips, essentially. So, you know, if they see me once, they can just, you know, Google me or look on the WWE Network and just go, you know, who's Tyler Breeze? And we have so much content on there already with NXT and, you know, with our uh, live specials, the takeovers and everything that are on there. You can really find out who I am in uh, essentially five minutes, and uh, I think you know the transition from NXT up into to Raw and SmackDown is going to be an easy one. And you know, just knowing how we do stuff, I think it'll be really, uh, really innovative and really cool. And the fact that you know, I mean, my character, the fact that I get to do a lot of modern stuff uh, in terms of technology and in terms of stuff that hasn't really been done before. Um, I think it should be really cool, and I think just, you know, the ideas and the possibilities are endless with this. So I'm really, uh, really excited to see where we go. Is it cool for a guy to wear a Tyler Breeze t-shirt, part man, all model? <laughs> I think it's cool. I love it. The more the better. I see a lot of women wearing them. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of 
course they do. Because I, I, you know, it's funny because going to some of the shows, I don't see that many guys. I'm waiting to see if it's going to catch on. Hey, you know what? Uh, I mean, the fact that I've stood in the ring and had uh, thousands of people chanting "Breeze is gorgeous." Yes. Uh, at this at, at this point, I'm not going to take anything off the table. What was it like? Because I don't I don't even know if you were there, but the Raw after WrestleMania, people were chanting "Breeze is gorgeous." Yeah, that and that's. I mean, the Raw after WrestleMania is always kind of a a different animal in itself. Uh, but it's really cool because they, you know, they they kind of take on a life of their own and they, you know, chant stuff. And, I mean, there was a lot of people there that were at our NXT show in San Jose. There was a lot of people there that were at WrestleMania. I mean, everybody, it's just uh, it's almost like wrestling heaven there, you know what I mean? Like, everybody kind of knows everything and they're just excited. They want to see what's going to happen. And, you know, it's so cool because anything can happen. And, I mean, that's I mean that's kind of the whole premise of WWE is you never know what's going to happen. and Kind of always on the edge of your seat waiting to see what's uh, what's next. Yeah, that was a crazy week because there was so much going on when it came to being in San Jose and Santa Clara for WrestleMania and Access and the NXT show just for fans. But then for you guys, for the talent and everything that went on, and uh, you were at Access, you get to do some matches there, sign some autographs and everything, and obviously the big NXT show. And you opened it up against uh, Hideo Itami with an awesome match. What was uh, What was the whole week like for you? The week, I mean, WrestleMania in itself is such a such a unique experience, and I actually got the opportunity to go a couple of uh, a couple months earlier for the uh, on sale ticket party, and that was awesome. I mean, just even going there and seeing the stadium and seeing how many people turned up just to you know get ahead of ahead of the curve, and they got their tickets, um, you know, when they when they went on sale, and I got to see how excited people were, and I just knew that you know when we came back, it was going to be just electric. And as all the NXT stuff kind of started to heat up and it was, you know, we're going to do this show in San Jose and, you know, it's already sold out. It's sold out in like, you know, an hour, an hour and a half or whatever it was and 5,000 people and they were trying to find more seats and then we were going to do stuff at Access and then we did stuff at the Arnold a couple months before and we did the, you know, Cleveland and Columbus. We've really just been branching NXT out so far that everybody is just, you know, they're excited about it. And the fact that you can feel it, like if you come to the, you know, the shows that we're going to be having in uh, Philadelphia and Albany. And, and, you know, just they're so – the atmosphere is so cool. And it's just – you can't capture it on TV. You have to actually be in there and feel it. And, you know, access in itself was so cool. People are excited for NXT. They're excited for autographs. They're excited for everything. And, you know, I sat there and I did autographs for four hours. And people – the way people were treating us was just – you know, I, I couldn't believe it. It was – people were meeting their heroes – and, you know, they were so excited just to just to talk to you or just to, you know, tell you, you know, I loved your match. I love the Fatal 4-Way. You know, I love, you know, they're just, everybody's loving NXT. And it's just, it's taking off. And just, and then, you know, we finally cap it off with that San Jose show. And, I mean, just being out there in that ring with everybody there was so cool because they weren't there to see the main roster people. They were there to see NXT. And there yeah. were 5,000 people. And, you know, they knew everybody. They knew everybody's entrance music. They knew everybody's moves. They knew everybody. They just, it was so cool. I've never been a part of that, and I was just so happy that, you know, I was i was included and had the opportunity to be in front of all that. It was just, you know, there's no stopping us at this point, just like our, our upcoming pay-per-view, TakeOver Unstoppable. Yeah, you guys are blowing up right now. I mean, everything's going nuts. What do you think, I know I asked you about, like, reaction to fans, but Philadelphia can be a very unique crowd and very diehard audience base what do you think the reaction is going to be like for you uh thursday and friday in philly you know what i think i think it'll be uh real unique i think it'll be a real cool atmosphere and you know it'll be a lot like i believe it'll be a lot like our uh the shows that we had in columbus and cleveland and san jose it was just the people that showed up they were there to see nxt and they were excited to see nxt and they wanted to see our whole roster and they wanted to see you know they just wanted to be a part of the future and they just you know, everybody wants to be ahead of the curve with us, and, you know, they want to get in on NXT before it becomes cool. You know what I mean? And, like, it's it, it's just so it's so underground. It's such a cool atmosphere, such a cool feeling to it. And I think the people in Philadelphia are going to be the same, you know? I mean, they, they you know, have the reputation or whatever, you know, being different or being unique. But I really think they're going to enjoy, you know, what we bring to the table, and uh, I think it'll be some great shows. They threw snowballs at Santa Claus. I just want to remind you of that years ago. <laughs> well, we got, as far as I know, you know, 
not Christmas time, and uh, as far as I know, we don't have Santa Claus on the roster. So. That's very true. So uh, NXT coming up Thursday and Friday in Philadelphia. Saturday, they'll be in Albany, New York. Uh, everybody can find out more online. Go to uh, WWE.com backslash NXT. And also, you've got TakeOver coming up next Wednesday on the WWE Network. The TakeOver shows have been incredible. We expect another fantastic one with those taking place at Full Sail University in uh, Winter Park, Florida. Tyler, thanks for the time, man. I really appreciate it. And uh, keep up the great work. Thank you very much. The talking is over. Thanks for downloading Between the Ropes. You guys are awesome. Thank you. For more, go to BetweenTheRopes.com and subscribe to Between the Ropes on iTunes. Thank you. Have a nice day.